Welcome to Lecture Online, and now let's take a look at the direction cosines of a vector. So we have a three-dimensional vector out in space. It has an x, a y, and a z component. You can see that there's angles, theta sub x, theta sub y, and theta sub z. Those angles are the angles between the vector and the x-axis, between the vector and the y-axis, between the vector and the z-axis. So what do we mean by direction cosines? Well, hang in there just a moment and see what we're going to do here. The vector can be written like this, so the, four, the vector f is equal to the x component in the x direction plus the y component in the y direction plus the z component in the z direction. i, j, and k are the unit vectors along the x, the y, and the z axis. Now let's say we have another variable, let's call it lambda. We make it into a vector and let's let lambda represent the unit vector in the direction of the f vector. So here, right here, this would be considered the unit vector in the direction of the force vector. It's only one unit long. Whoop, lost my pen here. So then we can write the unit vector as follows. We can say that the unit vector right here is equal to the cosine of the angle between the vector and the x-axis in the x-direction plus the cosine of the angle between the vector and the y-axis in the y-direction plus the cosine of the angle in the z direction times the in the z direction times the z direction okay all right now why can we write that well let's go back and see how we can denote f sub x f sub y and f sub z so if f sub x is equal to f times the cosine of theta sub x and f sub y is equal to f times the cosine of theta sub uh, sub y and f sub z is equal to f times the cosine of theta sub z. Now notice if we divide each of the x, y, and z components by the magnitude of vector we get that. So if we take f sub x and divide it by the magnitude of vector we get the cosine of theta sub x. If we take f sub y and divide it by the vector f we get the cosine of theta sub y and if we take f sub z divided by the magnitude of vector we get the cosine of theta sub z. What we can do now is we can take these ratios and plug them in into our equation right here. So the unit vector in the direction of the vector we're dealing with f vector is equal to f sub x divided by f times in the i direction plus f sub y divided by f in the j direction, which is the y direction, plus f sub z divided by f in the k direction. So this now represents the unit vector in the direction of the vector. This is the unit vector right there. And what are these ratios? Well, these ratios is what we call the direction cosines. So this, these ratios are the same as this. And therefore, we call them the direction cosines. So let me just denote that, because that's the important part. So these are called the direction cosines. And so ultimately, the direction cosines are simply the cosines of the angles between the vector in three dimensions and the x-axis, between the vector and the y-axis, between the vector and the z-axis. So you take the cosine of those angles, and those are considered the direction cosines. So what's the physical meaning of a direction cosine? What does it really represent to us? Well, it, it represents the relative magnitude of each of the three components of the vector relative to the vector itself. If the direction cosine is very small, and of course you notice that this has to be a number between 0 and 1. Well, let's start with this one maybe first. What if the direction cosine is 1? That means the vector is in the direction of that particular axis. For example, if the cosine of theta sub x is equal to 1, then the angle here is equal to 0. That means the vector lies along the x-axis. Or if this cosine of theta sub y is equal to 1, then we know that the vector lies along the y-axis. And if this is equal to 1, then we know that the, ve that the vector lies along the z-axis. But if the vector in our example here is not either along the x, y, or z axis, but somewhere in space, pointing in space, so that there's an x and y and z component, then what we can say is that the direction cosine squared added together, and then take the square root of that, should add, add up to 1. So what we can then also say is that the cosine of theta sub x quantity squared plus the cosine of theta sub y 
quantity squared plus the cosine of theta sub z quantity squared. If you do that, this should add up to 1. This is a, along the same lines as the trigonometric identity where the sine square of theta plus the cosine square of theta equals 1. Here in this case, it's in three dimensions, and so the what we call the direction cosines kind of take the place of that. We can say that the component in the x direction plus the component in the y direction plus the component in the z direction, each one of them squared added together, should add up to 1. And so that's another way of looking at it. If you take the components of the unit vector in the direction of the, of the, of the vector f, and you take each component you square it and add it together, that should give you the length of the unit vector right there, which of course is equal to 1. So the direction cosines, in essence, give you the relative length of each of the components. If the direction cosine is equal to 1, it, the vector lies in the direction of that particular, um, that particular axis, or if the direction cosine is very small, then it lies in a different direction. For example, if the, if the vector goes away from the y-axis, for example, and lies completely in the xyz, in the xz plane, then the component in the y direction is equal to zero, and therefore the direction cosine of that vector will be equal to zero, because then you have a 90 degree angle, cosine of 90 degrees is equal to zero. So the direction cosines gives you a real sense of what the direction of that vector is. The smaller the particular direction cosine, the smaller the component in the direction of that axis. If the direction cosine goes to zero, the component of, that, of the vector in that direction goes to zero. If the direction cosine goes to one, then you know that the vector tends to go into the direction of that particular axis. And that's what we mean by direction cosines. Sometimes the words just don't come into my brain. <laughs> it gets muddled up with all the other things in my brain. <laughs>